Thank you, Alan, for that kind introduction. Thank you for coming here tonight and giving me the opportunity to talk about our research. Um, these are my collaborators right here. Uh, Todd Drulli is a pediatrician who is now uh, working in my lab, and he's, he uh, is learning uh, and, and implementing technology. Sessions Cole and Aaron Han Dr. Sessions Cole and Aaron Hambus are also pediatricians, and they take care of uh, newborn babies. And our question, the question that we're interested in, is why do newborn babies get respiratory distress syndrome? Excuse me. So what is respiratory distress syndrome? Um, this is the most common cause of death in the first month of life, okay? And 1% of all uh, newborns get respiratory distress syndrome. So it's an important problem. It affects a lot of babies. Uh, and what happens, we know something about the mechanism. What happens is, is that these babies, their lungs do not produce uh, pulmonary surfactant. And what happens, so why do we need pulmonary surfactants? Pulmonary surfactant uh, reduces the surface tension at the air-water interface. Okay, so what that means is you need a low surface tension. If you, have, if you don't have a low surface tension, when you breathe out, when the baby breathes out, the lung collapses completely. Okay, and then when he breathes in, it takes a lot of force to open it back up. So if he doesn't have, if the baby does not have pulmonary surfactant, it has an extremely difficult time getting oxygen. Okay, so it breathes very, it's very uh, difficult for it to, to breathe. Okay. So this, this uh, disease most often occurs in preterm babies, um, but it's, it's, as you can see here, it, it, it does affect 1% of all newborns, but why do some babies get respiratory distress syndrome and others don't? That's the central focus of our research. That's our central question. Okay. So let me be a little bit more specific about, about our question. There's evidence that a great portion of the risk for developing RDS is in the baby's DNA, okay? So what is DNA? DNA uh, is, a, is a code. It's a code that gives the instruction set for making that, ba that particular baby, okay? And this code uses only four letters. It uses A, C, G, or T, all right? Now, there are, it uses only four letters, but there are six billion of them in every one of us. And so these babies that get RDS have changes in that code or, or mutations. We'll call them, I'll call them mutations, or if you prefer variants, that's, I guess, more politically correct. Um, these babies have mutations in their code that predispose them to get RDS. So our question is, what are the sections of this code that, when changed, make a baby get RDS. So what we really want at, at the end, our deliverable, is a list of places in this code that, when changed, cause or predispose to RDS. All right, is that clear? Okay? All right. Um, so one more thing that I want to mention is that if I take a baby that has RDS and a baby that, does not, that did not get RDS, okay, and I sequence their genome, they're going to be 99.9% .9 identical. So almost every base in their code, okay, will be exactly the same, except for about six million bases or so, okay? So for the most part, the code is exactly the same between these two babies, and we've narrowed it down to six million changes in each baby that causes, that, that predisposes to this disease. Okay. All right. So um, again, our main focus is understanding why babies get respiratory distress syndrome. And I, and I hope that uh, I've convinced you that this is an important medical problem um, with the information I gave you on the last slide. But it's actually, I think it's actually a very interesting problem from another perspective, uh, in that respiratory distress syndrome, or RDS, is what's called a complex disease, okay? So in the field of genetics, there are two types of diseases. There are Mendelian diseases, and there are complex diseases. Mendelian are simple diseases or complex diseases. So Mendelian diseases, are caused by a single gene, okay, a single section of that code. They have a high penetrance. What that means is that if you have a mutation in this gene, okay, you will get that disease. Sometimes it takes two copies of the mutation, one from your mom and one from your dad. But if you have one or two copies of that gene, you will get that disease. All right? And it's typically pretty rare. By rare, I mean about 1 in 10,000 individuals will have a Mendelian, a Mendelian disease. It can be anywhere from 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 10,000, depending on the disease. The other class of diseases in genetics are called complex diseases. These diseases are caused by multiple genes, 
Okay, so it's not just that you have a, a, a mutation in one bit of your code, but you've got to have a mutation in several different bits of your code. They interact to cause a disease, okay? Furthermore, environment often plays a role. So you may have to be exposed to a particular environment in combination with these mutations to develop the disease. They're low penetrance, meaning that you can have these mutations and a lot of people still don't get the disease. Uh, and they're much more common than these rare diseases. Okay? So you can imagine uh, for sort of obvious reasons and some reasons that aren't so obvious that it's much harder to deal with, uh, to understand what's going on in complex diseases and that means to find, to, to map the locations of the genome that cause these complex diseases than it is to understand uh, the, to, to map, to understand which regions of the genome are causing, are mutated and cause Mendelian diseases. So what do I mean by harder? Uh, this is what I mean by harder. Um, we understand uh, 2,300 simple Mendelian diseases and we understand really zero complex diseases, okay? So our strategy is, is very simple from a conceptual point of view, um, but it's a strategy that hasn't been possible until very recently. Uh, due, to, due to technology and cost, essentially cost. So what we're going to do is we're going to sequence 2,000 genes, okay, that are expressed in the cells that produce pulmonary surfactant, okay? And in, in 300 infants that have RDS and 300 infants that don't have RDS, okay? And so what we're looking for is when we find a gene that has an excess of mutations in RDS infants and not in uh, normal infants, then it's likely that that gene causes disease, okay? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna sequence genes, okay? We're going to, we're going to read off these base pairs, these, these four letters, all right? And we're gonna ask, does this base pair differ from the reference sequence? We have a reference genome, so we ask, does it differ? If it doesn't differ, we ignore it. That means it's not a mutation, okay? That means it can't be what's causing uh, respiratory distress syndrome because almost everybody has that exact same base. So we're going to focus in on the mutations. But just because you have a mutation, it doesn't mean that you get RDS. What you have to do is, is you, have to be, you, you have to see a mutation occur in the same region again and again and again in the RDS infants and not in the normal controls. Okay? And that's it. That's all we're doing. It's, it's actually pretty simple. Okay? So we're just correlating the mutations to disease. If we see a lot of mutations in the RDS infants and, in the, and not in the normals, then that is a section of the genome that we want to focus on. All right, so again, just to, make this, just to make this more clear, what I'm depicting here is a gene. So this is roughly 2,000 base pairs of your code, of anybody's code. One line represents 2,000 base pairs of your code, okay? So if you can imagine here that this line can be div divided up into 2,000 different sections. Now, I look at that, in this infant, I look at the very first letter and I say, is it different than the wild type genome, than the reference genome? If it's the same, I color it black, okay? So all of these, for example, all of these bases in this individual are the same as the reference genome, so I color it black here. And so that just means that this section, this line represents a section of the genome, and this section has no mutations. On the other hand, if there is a mutation, if there is a difference from the reference genome, I now color it red, okay? So each of these red, red bars here represents a base that is different from the reference genome. These are potential mutations that cause respiratory distress syndrome. So here is an example where I've got one gene in my, in my uh, disease cohort, in my respiratory distress uh, syndrome infants, I see an excess of mutation here. Okay, I see 11 mutations. And in my normal infants, I see three mutations. This is a big difference, and so now this would be a region of the code that we'd be very interested in, all right? And that would go on our list. And our goal, again, for this project is to simply put together a list of regions of the genome that we ought to pay attention to. Now, on the other hand, a lot of our genes we expect to look like this. We'll see some mutations, but we'll see an equal number of mutations in the normal infants and in the respiratory distress syndrome infants, okay? All right, so we, we, want, we want to sequence a lot of genes. We want to sequence 2,000 genes. So we want to repeat that experiment 2,000 times. Now, the problem is, is that 